Hi, I'm Dr. Kiki. Welcome to an exploration of the amazing world of coral reef reproduction. Getting enough energy is one part of survival, but reproduction is another very important part. Can you explain the types of reproduction that corals employ? Corals have different types of reproduction. Some of the reproductive processes are called asexual reproduction, and some of them are sexual reproduction processes where eggs and sperm are developed. Asexual reproduction includes clonal budding of the polyps. So when you have a coral colony, basically each of these little polyps over time grows and then subsequently divides to form daughter polyps. And over time you get a colony formed from this process of asexual reproduction. The interesting thing is that this is clonal reproduction, so this whole colony consists of polyps that are genetically identical. Corals also use sexual reproduction to increase the genetic diversity of the offspring. And they do this in a number of different ways. In terms of the sexual patterns, most of the more than 440 different coral species that have been studied around the world so far are what we call hermaphrodites. This means that they develop both eggs and sperm within each of their polyps, so they have both sexes present. Other types of corals have separate sexes, now that we have learned about the differences in coral, sexual and asexual reproduction, there are males, females, hermaphrodites. What about the babies that are produced? Are there different patterns of producing offspring? Corals have two major patterns in terms of developing coral larvae. These are called broadcast spawning and some corals are brooders. For broadcast spawning corals, they develop the eggs and sperm within each of the polyps over an extended period of months during the year. And when they're ripe and ready for fertilization, they release these in a spawning process into the open seawater environment where fertilization occurs externally. Brooding corals also develop eggs and sperm within their polyps. But unlike broadcast spawning corals, the brooders actually retain the eggs within the polyp and they take sperm from other colonies and draw it into their polyps so that internal fertilization and development can occur. The fertilized egg develops into an embryo and then a larva within the polyp. And when the larva are completely well developed, they are released from the parent polyp and are then dispersed onto the reef system. Coral larvae are extremely important in terms of the ecology of corals and reef systems. Brooded coral larvae often tend to settle close to their parent colonies, whereas broadcast spawned larvae have a period of at least three to four days usually developing in the plankton before they're able to settle. And therefore, quite often for the broadcast spawning species, their larvae are dispersed to greater distances across the reef or sometimes to other reef systems nearby. This allows genetic exchange between the coral populations and leads to gene flow between reefs.